It's this one moment in time where you can actually focus on a bit of text and give it your full attention. And we don't, in the public sphere, do that very often, right? I mean, most of the text we see in the world is, is noise. We have about 250 letters, so anyone who submits something has to fit into the constraints of how many H's and W's we have. You know, the project's been going on for about six years, pretty much under the radar. It's intentionally an unbranded project. You have no idea, there's no telephone number or website or demarcation of how you're supposed to interpret or read the messages. They sit enigmatically on the billboard with the sky as the backdrop, and to me that's quite lovely. Lenka Clayton is a local artist who had a text that said a uh, number of people who have looked at this sign. And she actually sat up here on the platform behind the billboard itself. And as someone would look up on the sign, she would change the number. You know, it's interesting. I think what she was trying to articulate with that was do people watch or do they not watch? And can the act of watching be noted on a sign that is primarily static, such as a billboard? Can it sort of watch you back? Another one I particularly like was by a 12-year-old girl. It's questions for my blog. Who invented tape? How were feelings discovered? And when did skinny become fashionable? These are obviously interesting questions for a 12-year-old, but they're also in interesting questions for an adult to have. And having a daughter myself, the question of when skinny became fashionable is actually quite compelling to me. So a Seattle poet decided that all he wanted on the billboard was the word poem and his phone number. Pretty cryptic, so does it, what does it mean when you call that number? And what it meant was, by and large, you would call and he would tell you a poem on the spot. It went directly to his phone. Or he would ask you for a poem. Or what would happen sometimes is he'd just be giving random advice to folks in Pittsburgh who happen to be in front of the billboard. Adam Freeland, who's an artist in Albany, New York, submitted a piece that says, let's put speakers on the rooftops of hospitals. Let's announce births and deaths as they occur. So it actually comes from a proposal that he's never been able to realize, uh, something he'd like to see in the world, is celebrating both you know, the beginning and the end of our lives. And it's, it's quite evocative. You can, you can picture hearing the speakers. It's something that um, places you in a moment in time and space um, that isn't occurring in life. And I think that's, for me, something that I think the billboard can do that advertising doesn't do. The billboard functions as a platform for a variety of voices. Specifically on the billboard, I'm interested in curating who participates. So I select artists, some of them are from Pittsburgh and many of them are from you know, throughout the country and some internationally. Right now we're about to put up a quote by Ben Kinsley and Jessica Langley who are doing a project where they've been collecting janks, which are basically put downs or your mama jokes from all over the world. I like to think of the billboard as a venue that brings voices that maybe aren't already in Pittsburgh to Pittsburgh. The billboard is in some ways the antithesis of social media, right? In, on one level you could say, well, it's about the length of a tweet, but it lasts for about a month. It takes five to six hours to put it up and take it down. It's incredibly physical in its presence in the city. It's not this kind of ephemeral information that comes and goes. And so what's interesting is I think people respond to that locally, you know, this object in space that um, they could kind of relate to in a very old fashioned way. And it surprisingly lives in both of those worlds, this kind of incredibly slow analog uh, physical experience here in the city and this rapidly shared um, social networked world online.
obviously I don't want to advertise. I don't want to take money you know, from marketers. And I, don't, I still reject on a weekly basis people who want to pay me to put certain messages up. I really don't want the dynamic of the billboard to be based on someone's capacity to pay for it. So that means finding independent funding strategies for it. Thanks to a gift from the Rita McGinley Fund through the Pittsburgh Foundation, I'll be able to continue doing the billboard for the next two years.